I'm going to show you a bit about how to load a sprite sheet into Phaser. And I'm going to use some snippets here and you can just type them out if you like or you can go to williamclarkson.net slash phaser snippets or just go to williamclarkson.net. It's under the toolbox here, phaser snippets. And I'm going to use sprite snippets today. And it has everything you need to be able to load a sprite sheet except for the sprite sheet. And I'm going to make a simple sprite sheet here to show you how it's done. The canvas for the image is 220 by 220. And I'm going to make some squares that are 100 by 100 pixels high and wide. And I'll set the position to 0, 0. And then I'm just going to copy this square four times to change different colors so you can see how the sprite sheet works. So put the X at 110 on the second square. So that's 100 pixels for the square plus 10 pixels of padding. And I'm going to copy those again. And I'll put the second set Y at 110 as well. So they're all 110 pixels apart. I'll change that to green and yellow. A better yellow. There. So that's a basic sprite sheet. So let me make a project folder for this so we can save the image. And I'm going to copy a basic template. You can find that at the website as well. And there's a link on the snippets page. So we give it a name, the folder here, and I'll just call it Add Sprite Sheet since that's the project we're working on right now. Make an image folder inside of that. And I'm going to copy the path so it's easy to save it. And let's see, we'll just call it image1.png. That'll work. Now let's set a project folder here in brackets. And you can use whatever editor you like, of course. And just point that to the Add Sprite Sheet folder. And now everything is set up with the basic template for us to start working in state main. Now let me how you show you how it's done with the snippets. To preload a sprite sheet into Phaser, you just copy this snippet right here, preload sprite sheet, push the button. And it takes three parameters. The first one is the key a unique key, just a reference name. Simply change the reference name here to, we'll just call it squares, and then we need to set the path. And I'll just copy it here, images, image1.png, or you can just type it out. A little harder than I thought to do. Paste that in, images slash image1.png. And then we need a width and a height. And this is the width and the height of the actual image plus the padding. Without the padding, it just won't work correctly. You'll only get part of the second image. So the image and the padding at 110 for both the height and the width. And then we have four cells. And the number of cells can be optional most of the time. Phaser can figure it out on its own. I'll go ahead and set it, though. And the next is simply adding an image to the stage. Set an image to the stage right here and just copy that. 
in the create function. We can take out the console log. And I'll change the char 1 here to a better variable var squares. And then we need an x position on how far to the left, and a y position how far from the top. And we'll just set it at 150 pixels, and the library key, which is squares, that we set up there in the preload, that should add it to the stage. Let me navigate to that. at sprite sheet folder. And I'm using a local web server here, but you can either use web space or you can get your own local web server as I talk about in another video. And there is a red square right there. So it didn't load the whole image, just the one frame, which is exactly what we wanted. To change the frame, we simply say squares.frame equals 3, for example. It started at 0 by default, so if I put it at 0, it's red, 1 is blue, 2 is green, and 3 is yellow. And that's all there is to loading a sprite sheet into Phaser. There's a bit more information like making animations with sprite sheets, and I will cover that in another video. Thanks for watching, and I hope this was helpful for you.